This is Jonathan Gardner, part of my Theory of Python series, and this covers not just Python and computer science, but some of the art and craft of uh, software engineering. And this is one of those topics, it's kind of a software engineering topic. I have some notes here, it's mostly unscripted, so consider this more like, I don't know, a vlog, I guess, if there's anything I'm gonna do, anything close to a vlog. Anyway, so um, starting a new project. So you have the assignment to start a completely new Python project. And this could be because you and your friend decided to start writing new software, maybe a video game, or you're building a new website or something like that. Or maybe you're at a company and they want to put software in a new project that's separate from the existing project. So what do, should you do? What would I do if somebody asked me to do this? Well, the first thing that I would do is I'd probably get some kind of mission statement. What is the project about? What do you intend it to do? What's the big goals, right? And every project should kind of have its own big goal that's separate from the other projects. And I would prefer having many smaller projects than one big project because it really helps to clarify and define things and you know, letting projects sink or float on their own is a big deal. Who are the users going to be? How are they going to use it? Are they gonna download the software on the computer? Are they gonna purchase a license? Are they gonna, uh, are you gonna serve it up on a website that they can interact with? You know, and that's something very important to think about. How is it gonna get developed? Who are the developers? Okay, sometimes this will change the project nature. You know, if, if you have a secret project, it's just you and your friend, you probably don't wanna put it publicly on GitHub, you know? Um, so you have to think about that as well. Uh, who are the owners and stakeholders? Who gets to make decisions? I can't tell you how many times this has been problems in the past where people get confused over who's in charge and then next thing you know, they're arguing about what to do or what not to do because nobody can make a decision. So these are more of the political ideas or the political things that you need to figure out that are outside of the actual software engineering. But these are all important and there's a lot of work that needs to be done here to really guide the project, make sure it's going in the right direction. The first thing I would do when starting a new project is I would choose a good name, okay? And a good name, well, I can, you can probably write books and books about choosing a good name for a project. <sighs> the project should have a name that somewhat relates to what the project is about. The reason why is you can't remember these code names forever. It's just gonna get all confusing. You can only keep so many code names in your head, right? So. And choosing a good name from the beginning is going to help later when you go to look it up or when you have other projects that are similar, you know. So typically, if the project's going to be principally Python, it's going to have Python in the name somewhere. If it's a service, it's going to have the word service in there or server or something like that. It's something to really describe what this project does, okay? Then you're going to go get a Git repo. And GitLab and GitHub are two great options to manage your project, your Git resources, right? But at the very least, on your local computer, take a directory and do Git init on that. I'll probably do a video on all the things you need to know about Git to really use Git properly. Next, what I'm gonna do is I'm gonna start setting up a basic package for Python, writing a setup.py. And um, so that means setting up a directory that's gonna have the source files or if it's going to be a single file, just write like the project.py file and then set up a setup.py that goes next to this. And this is pretty important for many reasons. Once you go to try to code on the project or try to test the project, that setup.py file is going to be really useful. Then next I'm going to work on writing a make file. Makefile is an old technology. There's lots of people that are trying to replace this. You might have your favorite IDE that has its own ideas on how you should coordinate the project, but makefiles are really useful. They can be used in any system. And makefiles, the makefile is gonna basically take commands that you run against the project and turn them into single commands. So like complicated scripts become single commands with the makefile. So learning the makefile and how that works is gonna save you a lot of time. I would then want to start writing the developer docs. This is a documentation intended for people who want to write on the project and it's going to detail things like what the coding standards are, um, how things should be organized, what things mean, and, you know, anything from the readme to the develop file. The readme file is more like, hey, this is what the project is about. The develop file is like, hey, this is how you develop on the project. 
And so I typically would jam these into something called Sphinx. Sphinx would build the documentation for me into beautiful documentation. And I'm going to use, I believe it's called AutoDoc. And what that will do is take the uh, doc strings from the Python files, from the objects in the Python files, and turn that into beautiful documentation for you. Okay. Once I have have the develop developer docs done, I have the basic file written, and I have something that just works. Then I'm going to think about how to install that. Am I going to launch that on a server? Is this going to be software that somebody's going to download? If somebody's going to download the software and install it on their machine, I need to start working on the install system so that they can install it properly on their machine, whatever that system is. Then we're going to work on user docs. And again, we're going to use Sphinx for this. But we're going to think about where these Sphinx docs will be hosted. How will people find the documentation that you've written? A static website? Is there? You can use something like readthedocs.io. Things like that exist as well. Uh, as you start writing code, you should be writing unit tests. And you'll have a unit test infrastructure that's going to be important. Typically, I use a nose for that, and I like to use a unit test module. I know there's other technologies out there, and people claim that their system is better, but I'm maybe I'm just a dinosaur in this, but I, I've never had greater success in using unit tests. I have tried these other systems out, though. And, of course, once you get your unit test working, you think your code is good, then you're going to need some kind of integration test to see that the components work together. And this will all kind of fall into the install procedure. Okay. So this is kind of what I'm thinking of when I start a new project, all the different elements that I have to bring together to make it all work. And I want to do more detailed videos on each of these things that you need to get the project really running. I want to spend a lot of time talking about how to do tests properly. This is such an important part of the Python system. The setup.py, there's some good examples out there that you can find. Um, there's really not a lot to say about that other than there's, there's great tutorials out there. I don't know that I can really add anything to that conversation. Makefile, this is something that I don't typically see people use, but once every time that I've introduced Makefile to people, they've fallen in love with it. They said this is the right solution, and they've used it everywhere else, right? Uh, some people come into a project that I've worked on, and they say, why is there a Makefile here? Makefile is so old. And they fight with it at first, but then they realize that this is actually the best solution. And um, it allows you, it gives you the freedom to use any IDE you want because it's not tied to the IDE anymore. Um, Sphinx, developer docs. Um, so this is something that more recently in my career I've, I'm spending more time ensuring that we have good documentation. So many times we've written projects, we've written software, and they want to bring somebody in, and then they're like, okay, teach them how the system works. And I'm like, well, I'm kind of busy right now. But if I have a documentation that he can read, that he can refer back to, it goes so much faster and it's so much easier to explain because I can point him to the documentation and how it works and stuff like that. Having an install system. So the goal ultimately is you want to do what's called CICD. Okay, CICD stands for Continuous Integration and Continuous Deployment. And what this means is that every time somebody makes a change to the software, it's integrated with all the other changes that have been made and it goes directly out to production. Right, And the reason why you know it can go out to production is because you have all the tests in place to ensure that there's nothing left to test, that there's nothing left to do, that if this change applied to this tree will produce software that does what we expect it to do. Okay, And there's not much more else to comment on that. Guys, I hope this was useful. If you have any questions about these different steps, I'm more than happy to entertain them. Of course, you can find me on Discord. So if you want to talk about your particular project or if you want to talk about ideas or alternatives, I'm available there. I'd love to talk with you. Hey, have a great day. Take care and bye-bye. Thank you for watching this video on the theory of Python by Real Physics. Be sure to subscribe and ring the bell, like and share this video. You can find me on Discord or support me on Patreon. Links are in the description below. Thank you so much. Have a great day. Bye-bye.